The following footage of the Ross Sea Party of Shackleton's British Imperial Transantarctic Expedition was shot in January 1917 by Aubrey Howard Ninnis, the Aurora's purser, and Alexander Stevens, chief scientist. It appears here as raw footage, as no records remain of any public exhibition of the film or the intended edited sequence of shots. On December 24, 1914, as Shackleton and the Endurance steamed into the pack ice of the Weddell Sea, a second ship headed south from Australia. She was the steam yacht Aurora, bound for the Ross Sea on the opposite coast of Antarctica. Under the command of Captain Aeneas McIntosh, the crew was charged with laying a supply line to support Shackleton's crossing of the continent. Shackleton and his party of five couldn't possibly carry enough food and fuel for the entire journey of over 2,700 kilometers. As they crossed the South Pole, their sledges would be nearly empty and their lives would depend on reaching depots set up by the crew of the Aurora. The Aurora's company was 28 strong, but only 10 men would form the shore party. Seven are seen here aboard the Aurora in 1917, Ernest Wilde, Keith Jack, Irvine Gaze, Dick Richards, Alexander Stevens, Ernest Joyce, and John Lachlan Cope. With the aid of 26 sledge dogs, the mission of the Ross Sea Party was to lay depots every 60 nautical miles from the coast to the foot of the Beardmore Glacier, nearly two metric tons of provisions cached across the Ross Ice Shelf. But their duties did not end there. Four of the party were scientists. In addition to sledging, they planned an array of scientific observations of weather, tides, glaciers, and sea ice. The crew ranged from 21-year-old physicist Richards to 39-year-old Joyce, a veteran of two previous polar expeditions. But for the most part, the men were inexperienced at polar travel, and the task ahead was a formidable one. The coastal area teemed with penguin colonies for biological studies. The team was also equipped to document the expedition with still and cinematograph cameras. Shot in 1917 by Howard Ninnis and Alexander Stevens, the motion pictures seen here are part of the only known footage of the party. The Ross Sea Party began ferrying supplies in January 1915. The men struggled over the heavily crevassed terrain through blizzards and bitter cold. Eighteen dogs perished in these first two months. With the onset of the harsh Antarctic winter, the men called a halt on sledging until the next spring season. As the long polar night descended, pack ice closed in, and the ship was buffeted by winds in excess of 120 miles per hour. Then, on May 6th, disaster struck. The ship tore free of her moorings in a gale and was swept out to sea. Like the Endurance in the Weddell Sea, the Aurora was locked in the grip of the pack ice and drifted helplessly northward. Most of the supplies had not yet been landed when the ship broke away. The ten men of the shore party were left with limited stores and only the clothing on their backs as they sheltered in a primitive hut. Penguins and seals were the mainstay of their diet. Frantic efforts to repair the ship's wireless failed to yield results. It was only the second Antarctic expedition to be so equipped, and the use of the technology in the region was still experimental. Both ship and land party were cut off from communication, helpless to signal for rescue. The outside world would not learn of the plight of the Aurora or the shore party until nearly a year later. The ship broke free of the pack ice in March 1916 and by April reached port in New Zealand. Not long after, Shackleton reached South Georgia in the James Caird. It was not until December 1916 that the Aurora embarked on a relief voyage to the Ross Sea under the command of veteran polar captain John King Davis. 
Shackleton himself was aboard to lead the search party when they reached land. As the ship neared Ross Island, the crew feared for the lives of their shipmates, stranded for over 20 months in the Antarctic. On January 10, 1917, they disembarked and sighted figures approaching in the distance. Shackleton and two men raced to meet them. The joy of their reunion was tempered by sorrow. Seven men had survived, but three had tragically lost their lives, Captain McIntosh, Reverend Arnold Spencer Smith, and Victor Hayward. Six of the seven survivors are seen here, Ernest Joyce, Dick Richards, Ernest Wilde, Irvine Gaze, John Cope, and Alexander Stevens. The men told an astonishing story. They had not only survived, the Ross Sea Party had sledged some 2,400 kilometers, hauling supplies back and forth across the treacherous ground in sub-zero temperatures to lay the depots. As their suffering companions faltered, three men were the mainstay of the sledging party, Dick Richards, Ernest Joyce, and Ernest Wilde. They are seen here with three of the four dogs who pulled them through the final miles, Oscar, Gunner, and Towser. Plagued by frostbite and scurvy, the party had continued on, unaware that the sinking of the endurance had rendered the depots useless. But against all odds, they accomplished their mission. It was the only successful part of Shackleton's original plan. Shackleton, who enters the shot here, later wrote of their achievement, I think that no more remarkable story of human endeavor has been revealed than the tale of that long march. But upon their return to England, the story of the Ross Sea Party was overshadowed by the drama of the endurance and the overwhelming tragedy of the Great War. Many of Shackleton's men enlisted to serve in the war. Within a year of his return, Ernest Wilde died aboard a minesweeper of typhoid fever. In 1923, Wilde's heroism was recognized when he was awarded the Albert Medal, along with Richards, Joyce, and Hayward. In later years, Richards offered an eloquent perspective on the expedition. That the effort was unnecessary, that the sacrifice was made to no purpose, in the end was irrelevant. To me, no undertaking carried through to conclusion is for nothing. And so I don't think of our struggle as futile. It was something that the human spirit accomplished. <laughs>